Hey guys, it's Sam Wise, and today we've got a video. So we have got here the MAG X870 Tomahawk Wi-Fi AMD motherboard. This is one of the latest X870 motherboards that are out right now. Really highly rated, really highly reviewed. Um, this is probably MSI's most popular motherboard for this generation, this x87. Um, you know, people have their opinions on this chipset generation. It doesn't seem like it brought a whole lot of extra features from some of the older generations. The only difference between x870 and x870e is the amount of PCIe lanes that are available, among some other maybe premium features that you can find on the more expensive boards, but that's the big chipset difference. So that's kind of a theme with all the x870 motherboards is that PCIe lanes are a luxury. But looking at the box here, nice gray box, um, pretty subtle on the side, just some pretty typical branding. Same thing on the top, just a little bit of information there. Uh, on the back, we have some nice um, information about the product here. So it's a 14 stage do it rail power system, um, Gen 5 on the NV NVMe SSD, as well as the PCIe uh, slot for your video card. It's got two USB type C 40 gigabits per second ports. That's really the big thing that separates X870 from the prior generation of chipsets for AMD. This board also has Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, some DIY builder, nice things to have like the easy PCIe release, which means you just push a button to get your graphics card out. Um, this top NVMe slot uh, heatsink and this bottom NVMe heatsink are also toolless, so you just push a button to get in there. Um, and then 5G LAN, which is another feature that for a motherboard in this price point at $299, you're really not gonna find a whole lot of um, with 5G LAN. So really feature packed. Um, I'm excited. This is my first MSI motherboard in a while. I had an MSI uh, gaming laptop a while back um, that was pretty good. I didn't mind it, but it wasn't anything too exceptional. However, I've heard really good things about this generation and the last couple generations of MSI motherboards, so I'm excited to try them. Uh, normally I go with Asus boards, but if you are aware of what's going on in the industry, you know Asus is having some uh, interesting issues right now as far as the quality of their boards and their customer service and a whole lot of other issues. So stay away from Asus this time around. But here you can see in the box, we have our Wi-Fi 7 antenna. Uh, looks pretty good, nothing too crazy there. Uh, it is magnetic on the bottom, so that is nice. And then here we have the motherboard. So you can see it comes in a nice anti-static bag. We'll pull that up. It does look like there's some more accessories. Wow, it's heavy. That's surprisingly heavy. Okay, the accessories and the rest of the box here are actually pretty nice. There's a lot more here than and some other motherboards in this price range. So these are like organizers for your cables as you're building out your case. You can see you could wrap cables um, or bundles with different colors to identify them. What's RGB, what's fan. You got some SATA ones here too. I don't know too many people who are building with a lot of SATA parts anymore, but you have the option. I've also got a couple MSI stickers here. Um, the badge, the battery. Oh, I guess this could go on your motherboard battery to actually cover the top. And then the MSI little dragon guy who is kind of cute. So that's cool. Uh, typical SATA cables here. One's a right angle, one is straight. Here you have uh, MSI's proprietary Easy Connect connector. This comes included with your motherboard. Um, plugs into the motherboard on this side. And over here, you've got two four pin fan connector. Oh, sorry, you've got one four pin fan connector. This actually looks like a front panel connector of some kind, maybe your power button, your power reset. You could actually plug into this. And then an ARGB five volt header. So the nice thing is, you no, know, this will plug into your board and you can maybe route these cables either to the back of your case or above or below, wherever you need to, to get 
your fans and your ARGB and your front panels hooked up. So speaking of front panels, this motherboard also comes with probably my favorite feature of any motherboard, which is a front panel easy connector. So down here plugs into the front panel port on your motherboard. And up here is where you'll actually plug in all the front panel cables from your case. So what's so nice about this is that you're able to manipulate this and move it around and have a little more room to work when you're plugging in those really finicky and annoying um, panel connectors that give people so much trouble. So that's a great feature to have. Finally, we've got a little kind of um, standoff screw and unscrew key. You've got some additional screws here and it looks like maybe a standoff for an SSD screw. And then you have a flash drive. MSI actually gives you a 32 gig flash drive with the drivers pre-installed. These are probably not the most up-to-date, so you may want to still pull from online to get the most up-to-date, but you can use this for anything after you have your motherboard set up. And then finally, pretty typical literature, some promotional stuff, quick install guide, uh, where you have to actually scan the QR code to get the full manual, and then regulatory notices, and another screw hiding. Couple screws hiding. Wow, they're multiplying. Okay, so now we've got the motherboard out of the box. And as you can see right away, this is a beautiful looking motherboard. I mean, I love the design here. The black with like the military green, yellow, looks really cool. Um, this thing is heavy. This has gotta be one of the heaviest motherboards I've ever like manipulated very much. Um, these VRMs are beefy. The cooling here is significant. So that's really great to see. Awesome cooling. Um, of course, this is an AM5 socket here. Uh, four available slots for dual channel RAM. Um, you've got a debug error code reader here, as well as debug lights. You've got headers for your CPU fan, your pump, um, and then some system fans along here. Um, pretty typical power situation. This is where your Easy Connect cable is going to plug into that we saw before. Um, you've got USB-C for your case there. You've got SATA and then USB 3 uh, for your case as well. Here at the bottom, uh, you've got two ports for uh, ARGB connections, a third one over here. Um, you've got your front panel connector. You've got two USB 2.0s, some more system fan headers. And then here you've got an auxiliary power for your PCIe. So if you plug this in, it's gonna deliver additional power to whatever graphics card that you're using or any other PCIe devices that are plugged in. Here you can see this is where your Gen 5 NVMe SSD will go. Um, Gen 4 or 5, it is backward compatible, but up to five speeds will go up here. You have room for two more M.2s here. There's one 5 PCI or Gen 5, and there's one Gen 4. Uh, and then there's another Gen 4 at the bottom. This one does require a screwdriver, but the top one here is fully toolless on the removal. You can see you just push a little button in and it comes out. Same thing with this lower Gen 4. Also, you just push a little button and it pops off. You can see both of those come with some thermal pads and this main one here has thermal padding on the bottom as well. So just make sure you pull off the plastic on the top of the heatsink as well as underneath if there's some there before you install your SSD. So that's kind of a tour of the motherboard here. Um, again, really nice features. The chipset, of course, is underneath this heatsink here. Um, really happy with the quality of this board so far. I'll show you the AIO, or the, the IO, I mean, um, is integrated. And so you've got buttons for both flashing your BIOS and for clearing CMOS. In the BIOS flash, you can do without a processor or RAM installed. Um, HDMI, two of your USB-C 40 gigabits per second. You've got your USB 10, um, three USB 5Gs, 
uh, one more USB 10 down here, and then four USB 2.0s. So what you'll most likely want to be doing is plugging in any devices here that don't require high speed, then any sort of flash drives or, or anything else that you do want that higher speed uh, connection for, you can plug in up here. Additionally, there's one more USB-C 10G here, which is kind of interesting. There's actually three on this board. Your 5G LAN, your Wi-Fi 7 is here, and then you have a speed if out, mic in and line out for your audio. So really comprehensive, really nice. Um, in my opinion, one of the better options for uh, ports on the back of this motherboard compared to anything else that's really in this price category. Okay guys, I think that wraps things up with this MSI Tomahawk X870 uh, AM5 motherboard. Overall thoughts on this, really like the build quality, really love the weight and the heft to it. The cooling here is pretty exceptional. The features are nice. There are a couple of downsides though. So the first is, if you're using these extra M.2s down here, this extra Gen 5 especially, that's gonna share bandwidth with your USB 4 ports on the back. So you kind of have to choose, do I want a, another Gen 5 M.2 or do I want my USB 4s? Um, another downside that I've noticed is that there's no ARGB headers here at the top. Um, that's something the other, board, other motherboards offer and is a feature that's really convenient because oftentimes your AIOs, your CPU coolers, there's a lot of fans at the top of your case and having ARGB headers at the top uh, as well as on the bottom, not exclusively on the bottom, makes that setup and build a little bit easier. Now one caveat to that is you do have an ARGB um, connector with this Easy Connect, right? So that's what I'm going to do for my build. I'll use this Easy Connect cable, probably just fish it through to the back of my case and as high up as I can. And then anything I would have plugged into an ARGB header up here, I'll plug into that cable instead. So there are some workarounds, but still wish we could have had some actual headers on the board there. Everything else is here. I mean, having the debug code on a motherboard under $300 is awesome. And the LED lights, um, you know, the RAM is going to be running great. The easy builder features like this push button to release or lock the video card, super convenient. You don't have to dig around in there to push that little um, connector down anymore. I love the toolless heat sinks for the M.2s. Um, and everything else is, is pretty standard, pretty quality. It's an eight layer PCB, which is server grade. Um, so you know it's gonna stand the test of time. Um, the BIOS here is also pretty new. MSI has one of the newest BIOS releases of any of the motherboard manufacturers. It looks really slick. Um, if you love the old school look of BIOSes, you're probably not gonna like it. But if you are a newer builder, the easy features there are great to have. So overall thoughts, I give this one a nine out of 10. I think the features here are awesome. I think the price is dead on. If I, I mean, I bought this for myself. So this is obviously the X870 motherboard that I chose out of all the options. Um, just those small gripes, the lack of ARGB headers and the sharing of the bandwidth, you know, you can work around those. So not huge deals. All the important stuff is here. So. Thank you guys for watching so much. Again, I really appreciate you uh, tuning in, watching my videos, giving me a like and subscribing. And other than that, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.